Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I am bringing you today is called Autumn Wood, and it is a 12 by 18, completed very recently, and uh, is also um, no longer in my possession. A lovely lady came and bought it um, about a week ago. So. Um, I'm really excited to present it to you because I'm very proud of the painting and uh, you know just it, it, this whole year I've been trying to um, improve um, the quality of my larger works and to do more larger works and I think I've succeeded I've done some of the better um, for me larger paintings I, I you know uh, as you probably know I sort of have specialized in smaller works but um and this is by some people's standards not all that large but for me it's a good size painting and um, the challenge is always uh, of course to keep things feeling fresh not to overwork them uh, because you have so much more room and uh, funny enough I'm going to, uh, well two things, one is that I'm going to uh, make the live video of this, which is <laughs> four and a half hours long, um, I'm going to make that available to uh, everybody um, for about a week, so this is my Christmas day, so I'll leave it up there um, till January 1st, now it will be uh, running with advertising on it, I don't know how often YouTube's going to interrupt your flow, but hey, it's usually members only, so just, you know, be digging on that. And if you are a member, um, you know, you'll know I do this once in a while just so people can see uh, what they're missing from the membership area, and this is a really good example. And It's not like I'm giving you, um, you know, a lesson after lesson for four hours, but really if you're interested in getting to grips with... Uh, uh, learning about painting and live in the moment this would be like being a fly on the wall in my studio it's like you're right there behind me and there's all sorts of tips and tricks that come out um, and not only that you get to see my struggle you know it's live so uh, <laughs> it can be a little uh, you know I don't struggle too often but uh, I do still struggle we all do uh, painting if painting was easy everyone would be doing it um, also, uh, so keep your eyes open for that. That video will be coming up. It'll be available same time as this, so I recommend watching both. If you remember, though, uh, I'd hold off because when I put it into the um, the membership area, I'll be sure to yank the uh, the advertising right off of it, so you don't have to deal with that. And um, yeah, for you non-members, I mean, there's like 80, 100 videos that are all live in the uh, members area and uh, just you know a good way well I mean especially say you live in an area where you don't have access to um, good painting instruction you know here I am uh, all the way coming to you all the way from out here in New Zealand and I saw a little hiccup in our video there hopefully I'll remember to fix that uh, the other thing I want to do is uh, lately I've been um, trying to incorporate some uh, other you know you've heard You've heard from me lots on all of the various aspects of painting, and I'll be sure to interject, but when I got started back in 2009, my favorite painting book was by a guy named Bob Rome, and it's called The Painterly Approach. If you don't own this book, it's still in print. Go out and buy it. It is a great book, and if you can still find his DVD anywhere out there, I highly recommend that, just as much as the book. It's the best instructional DVD I ever saw. You know, he's a great teacher. I'm trying to find a year of publication here, but um, I don't want to take up a bunch of your time. Uh, yeah. Suffice to say, I got it in 2009, and uh, I got several other books. Uh, the Kevin McPherson, I got a lot from him too, but you know, if you had to say, oh, you can have the Bob Rome book or you the Kevin McPherson book, I would have gone with the Bob Rome book. Um, because I think Bob Rome, uh, Kevin, not, not taking anything away from Kevin McPherson, but Bob Rome really resonated with me, and uh, I love his paintings. Uh, he was such a great teacher, and I was so thankful to, to come across this book um, when I started my journey as a painter. So, uh, and I'll interject, I just opened it random, this is page 42, and I'll be doing this for, you know, um, I don't know, I'll be visiting, I have lots of books in my collection, so I thought one thing that might be cool would be to read you a little bit, 
kind of give you because you know I'm in agreement with Bob um, Bob paints in a little more impressionist manner than I do but uh, great painting is great painting and his paintings are great so even if you want to be a tonalist um, everything he says you could definitely apply to tonalist paintings tonalism is really just a little bit of a different approach than impressionism um, impressionism is maybe more interested in capturing um, a, a more direct representation of reality I would say of the lighting where tonalism this is my in the pocket definition uh, tonalism is more concerned with a poetic interpretation and emotional interpretation of the scene and there's a heck of a lot of overlap and I'm not that into stressing the uh, differences because frankly you know we're all different as individuals and schools of painting uh, they're debatable that's what art historians are there for um, as an artist I think you should just be endeavoring to express yourself um, in the most emotive and, and authentic way possible uh, so that people can resonate with your um, interpreta interpretation of nature and what it's all about. So, without any further ado, page 42, let's read for a little bit, eh? Um, he starts at the top, the, the, the name of this um, bit of the book is called Keep the Viewer Interested. Accents in a painterly painting can be as simple as direct or bold strokes. These strokes are focal points that attract the viewer's eye by their characteristics. Use these accents to create a path of either light or dark that guide the viewer's eyes into and around your painting, leading them to the center of interest. If you are attracting attention where you don't want it, simply soften the edges, values, or colors. And I'm going to take a little break there. There's a lot of times where you'll see me break out a paper towel, and especially if you're not in the members area, you might wonder what the heck is he doing. Um, what I'm doing is, and usually like I'm still in blocking phase on this painting we're looking at right now, <clears throat> but you'll see probably in a moment where I feel like I've got most of things blocked in, I want to start adding some highlights and interest, uh, you know, more contrast. Uh, you'll see me go through with a paper towel and really what I'm doing is softening those edges. You want to get in there and make sure that where you have really, I call it crusty, you know, um, where you have intense brush fracture that always always captures attention especially in areas of high contrast so that should always be something that's you don't want your whole painting from edge to edge to be like that and that's a mistake a lot of amateurs make so let's get back to what Bob has to say about it uh, soften the edges values or colors and make them more dynamic where you want the viewer to look this is one of the most important concepts of composition creating a visual path not just copying elements of your subject because they are there one of the keys of painterly painting is attracting the viewer to strokes of color value and edges that may have no other purpose than to make the work more dynamic this truly separates the drawer and the painter the drawer controls the view by the representation of detail the painter controls the view by manipulating paint with or without any relationship to reality but rather with concern for good composition and visual flow and this ties into contrast so you can see that area of the lightest green in the middle there um, we're still in block in stage right here but that I am going that is where we are headed that to me is sort of the focal point the path is taking you there and everything else around the painting is supporting your your eyes going there so that's the place I'm going to start breaking out the cad yellow and really socking it in a lot of um, you know attention right and uh, that's done with contrast it's done with edges and uh, what I would call that would be like a payoff that's going to be the payoff area right yeah now there's so many aspects of painting to keep track of but this uh, the the last uh, video I did where I read some uh, chunks from uh, good old uh, Paul Civic so Streisick I'm sorry Paul I always get your name wrong Bob Rome's name I can remember easily though so let's focus on that <laughs> Uh, he talked a lot about the same thing. This is something that any teacher of painting is going to harp on a lot because um, you're, when you don't know uh, how uh, to paint, you're just getting started. What you really are doing is, yes, you're learning how to paint, but you're also really learning how to see 
and it, it can't just be how you see you need to have an awareness of how other people see okay um, and it, it, the, the analogy I've used probably this is probably my 40th or 50th time in this channel of using this analogy but I think it's apt and I, I always lay this on my students out here uh, my, my in the studio students um, if, let's say you want to feed your baby a steak well your, your baby doesn't have any teeth he's not going to be able to eat that steak um, if you put it in a blender though um, you can feed your baby steak all day long now when we as people view reality what we're doing is scanning a point that's about the size of say well, let's just say it's um, a baseball sized area about arm's length away from you that's always in focus and your eyes are constantly scanning uh, any scene and uh, focusing on that space and um, the reason you think everything is in focus in the room is because your mind creates the picture now we do this all day long it doesn't make us that tired however it does require energy to do that it requires energy to process um, reality and to um, uh, sort of phase out the things that we may not be interested in and focus on the things that we are interested in this is a pretty much unconscious activity unless of course we're looking for something um, when you are presenting a painting to people it should be like the baby food analogy don't make them chew on the steak the steaks ready to go in all they gotta do is put it in their mouth and the same <laughs> the same thing should be going for your picture it just sh they should be able to apprehend the whole scene at one time at one go it should just come into the mind you've already created the focus and focal point you've decided where you're gonna direct their gaze if they have to scan your painting the same way they would scan reality or a photograph um, it's going to be less than comfortable, especially when you compare or contrast your work with somebody uh, that knows what they're doing and knows how to direct people's vision. Yeah, uh, you can see I'm starting to build up my layers of uh, interest and contrast in the back there right now. And um, yeah, uh, interestingly, you know, I thought as I was doing this painting, I was thinking, oh well, I like this. This is pretty good. But you know, I know like when things are going really poorly, see that's what I'm doing with that paper towel, I'm softening things, I'm softening things, little bits of softening, I know I want the, I want the um, differences in color and if you were to get up close to my painting you would see, wow, you know, how many different variations of green or brown green or red green or green green or yellow green or whatever are going on here, you might go, wow, that's a lot, you know, but um, because I'll soften the edges, it doesn't jump out at you. It just uh, plays a supporting role. And when I want the, where I want you to really, y you know, you need to have like one area of your painting usually that's got really strong contrast. Sometimes you can get away with two, um, especially say uh, in the sky where I was going to have bright areas of contrast. The sky is always the brightest thing in just about any painting. Um, the exception, of course, to this painting, I think that uh, that clump of uh, yellow bush in the the middle um, background um, is the focal point, is the brightest thing, and it's going to go a little brighter. Yeah. So, actually, we could get into some more Bob Rome, but we're pretty close to the end here. We'll be revisiting Bob Rome. He is a great teacher. If you don't have this book, go buy it. Buy yourself a Christmas present. You won't regret it. You go, ah, oh, my mic. What a good guy he is for putting me on old Bob Rome. You know, Bob's not a tonalist. Bob's an amazing painter. I don't know much about him. I know maybe back about 10 years ago, I went out and tried to find any images of his work that I could, um, which were mostly low res. And uh, that was mostly for interest. I've never made any copies after Bob Rome. Um, um, and as I was talking about in the last painting, which was a study after Dupree, if you're making copies after people, always make sure there's an attribution on your back, uh, on the back of the painting, saying that this was work was painted after so and so at such and such a time. And uh, some people do make copies after my work. You know, I allow it. That's fine. Just make sure there's attribution. But honestly, wouldn't you be better off making a pa making a study after a serious solid master like Corot or George Ines? John Francis Murphy, and I'm not saying I don't have some mastery, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying, which is that 
you know there's so many dead guys you could make copies after um, why would you want to do a living one you know All right. uh, and there's plenty of things on my channel uh, where I'm doing studies after masters you could definitely go after those same paintings and by the way if you were struggling for a bit of reference there uh, drop me an email yeah so, all that said, Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much for watching my channel, and uh, I hope you have a happy and prosperous New Year, and, you know, best of the season to you and your family. Yes, really, really appreciate you coming here. And uh, you can tip on over to my website if you like, uh, drop me a donation, or buy something in my store, or uh, send me an email, what, whatever you like. But until I come back with another video, take good care. Please, stay out of trouble, and... Happy Holidays.